Hi everyone, this is Josh Houston, and I want to talk to you guys a few minutes about framing effects. The first thing that we need to understand when it comes to framing effects or framing theory or framing is to understand exactly what we are talking about. Basically framing, uh, what it does is it tries to get you to adopt a specific viewpoint, um, to put in simpler terms. If you look at this picture here, you can see there's three images and uh, sometimes you might actually see this in a newspaper or, um, or a magazine on a cover um, and usually that particular um, brand of media or news uh, station may try to get you to adopt a particular opinion. If we look here on our left hand side uh, we can see that we have a guy who looks to be like he's uh, a hostage um, and then you have a soldier that's pointing a weapon at his head now if you took just this image and posted it on uh, the cover of a magazine uh, you might think uh, that it it might give off a negative uh, connotation um, that this soldier is being harmed or uh, whatever the case may be. Now, if you, if I could draw your attention to the right side over here, you'll see it's the same picture, but now the emphasis of the frame is focused on another soldier or a soldier here, and he has a canteen of water that he's giving to the hostage. Now, this was posted on a uh, website or a um, magazine or so, um, you would get most likely a positive um, image. It'd be a positive image and you would think that, wow, okay, he's actually being helped as opposed to uh, the picture on the left-hand side uh, where it's more negative, it's uh, more aggressive, there's uh, the gun being pointed at um, the man's head. Now, if you look here in the middle, okay, let's draw this here. You see here that now you have the whole entire picture of what is actually happening, okay? Now, you could say that um, the, the soldier that's here on the left side holding the weapon um, is not necessarily holding the weapon at the man's forehead. Um, it's actually uh, pointed downways uh, from his forehead, although the image looks as though it is pointed right at his head. But once again, uh, framing um, presents a particular picture of what they want you to see, or whoever it is that's taking the picture wants you to see. And as well, you can see here, uh, you have the soldier um, holding the canteen and um, giving him some water. So, um, this is how you know pictures can actually manipulate your 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 way of thinking and so as we get further into this uh, discussion um, I'll be explaining is how this effect uh, is done in the media so first um, to understand framing we first need to define framing framing is defined as the action or method or action method or process of constructing making or shaping anything whether material or immaterial okay so basically it's pretty much just just taking something whether like I said like the definition is saying is whether it's concrete or um, whether it's an idea um, oftentimes uh, we we see this today and how um, well, for instance, with this picture over here that I uh, that I picked out here, uh, you can see, um, you know, you have the elephant, you have the the, the donkey, which represents it's a p political um, a p uh, it's a political picture where you know elephants represent Republicans and the donkey represents Democrats. But within each political camp, they describe each other based on these. Um, for lack of a better word, stereotypes. And then what happens is is that um, different media stations uh, or news stations such as MSNBC, Fox News, uh, CNN, um, a lot of them actually have 
a political bias when they present the news. Now, it depends on which um, political party that is uh, backed by them. Uh, most of the stories will have a, a more political slant toward that party. So you can see here uh, with the the elephant here, you can see that he has a frame around him around him. So has economic says economic economic stimulus. I'm sorry, and it says party of no. And basically, this is how the Democrats see because you can see here that the um the donkey is actually holding up the frame uh, around uh the elephant to show that's how that's the view that they want to present as how republicans are so it's it's a negative uh view negative frame that they want to present to people so that other people can vote for their party and it's the same as what the elephant is doing with the donkey here you can see his hands over here uh, and it says deficit spending, and it says party of O. Um, these are uh, different um, elements that are characteristic uh, according to the Republican political party of how they see uh, Democrats. Um, but that's basically how we are going to define framing. It's just basically uh, taking, you know, or having the action of the method of the process of constructing a particular viewpoint, um, whether it's material or immaterial, um, to present to people so that they can, um, so we can construct a, or get them to see a story in a particular way. Okay, so um, now that we have defined framing, th uh, frame, uh, framing, um, let's understand what framing theory is about. Uh, basically, within framing theory, um, it's, it's basically, it's all within the same thing. But uh, it says that today that basically framing theory uh, represents um, one of the most common research approaches um, in the field of communication. Because it, it's so prevalent within our media, um, there are so many stories that are presented and each one uh, whoever presents the story is trying to get you to view that story in a particular way. So uh, it says here that a frame specifies the relationship between a number of connected elements in a text helping us to define or interpret what is going on, making sense out of events. So basically when you have uh, an event such as, uh, say, an event like 9-11, um, if you can recall many much of the media at that time were you know trying to make sense out of what was going on or why this event had happened so there were a number of stories that had come out um you know basically you know saying that oh it was the the arabs or you know terrorists or you know whoever um but they were trying to make sense out of the event so they would construct these stories based on the event but showing it in a particular light to try to get or change a particular um, viewpoint. And so basically, um, framing theory uh, suggests that how something is presented to the audience, uh, and the audience in this case is uh, considered um, the, to be the frame, uh, influences the choices uh, people make about how proce how to process that information. So once again, um, taking certain elements from a particular story, um, and basically, to they whoever presents the story has a particular viewpoint that they want you to adopt. So they'll construct the story in a way to they'll pick and choose. Um, what they want to frame to the audience and, and present that to them so that they can adopt that particular um, opinion. Uh, the most common use of frames is in terms of the frame the news or media place on the information that they convey. They are thought to influence the perception of the news by the audience. In this way, 
it could be construed as a form of second level agenda setting. So um, that is another interesting thing about framing is that it's often associated with agenda setting. Um, we know from the text that agenda setting has to do with a uh, particular angle that a, a particular news media uh, is trying to present, uh, whether it's a particular issue um, whatever it is that that they're trying the major thing that they're trying to get across and so they'll take a story um and with and then they'll insert their agenda into the story so meaning that they will take only the elements that will um confirm um or bolster rather their agenda and then that is what gets presented to the audience um, the, the person that is, uh, kind of, that came up with this theory, his name is Irving Goffman. Um, and basically, uh, he, he basically argues that, um, that people interpret what is going on around their world through their primary framework. So basically, according to Goffman, everyone has their own framework, um, uh, from which they, uh, make sense of the world around them. Uh, says this framework is regarded as primary as it is taken for granted by the user. Its usefulness as a framework does not depend on other frameworks. Okay. Now, he also put forth that um, there are two distinctions um, within primary frameworks. And he terms them as natural, a natural framework, and a social framework. And so he says that both play the role of helping individuals interpret data. Okay, or they use uh, they use these frameworks to make sense of of how they um, of the data that they receive um, on on a daily basis. Um, basically, so that their experience can be understood in a wider social context. The difference between the two is, is functional. Now, I'm sorry, here I got <laughs> my pen here. Um, so basically, the difference between the two is that natural frameworks identify events as physical occurrences, taking natural uh, quotes literally and not attribute not attributing any social forces to the causation of fits. Okay, so basically um, these are just events in general as they happen. Um, and once they begin, they go from the natural framework into the social framework, uh, which basically views events as socially driven occurrences Due to the whims, goals, and manipulations on the other part of social of other social players, so th the difference between the two is that one framework, which is the natural framework, is completely uh, subjective um, in terms of it's based on your own framework. So there's no other influences in the way that you see a particular event. Uh, or an event that that happens naturally it's just something that um, that just naturally occurs but you have not given it um, any meaning um, yet as uh, um, as it happens so then with social frameworks basically the, these are the ones where um, w that as events happen there's a social context that are that is put upon it by uh, the people that they they drive those those events. So basically, it's the other other social players that add meaning to the to that particular framework, so that it in hopes that it becomes your own framework. So uh, just like it says here, it says social frameworks are built on. Uh, the natural frameworks okay so you have the natural frameworks are the are foundational and social frameworks um, are added uh, to uh, to the natural in order to get a particular uh, framework out of that 
These frameworks and the frames that they create in our communication greatly influence how data is interpreted, processed, and communicated. So basically, uh, Goffman's assumption in this is that individ individuals are capable users of these frameworks on a day-to-day -day basis, whether they are aware of them or not. And this is very much true um, in how we see uh, different news and media and, and how, we, um, how we view them. You know, um, uh, case in point, uh, if many of you can recall the Trayvon Martin case, and um, the we were aware of the event that happened. You know that a that a man had shot. You know, a young um, black man who was on his way home from a from a convenience store. And then as the story was developing over the successive weeks, um, we saw the images of the two men. Um, we saw Trayvon Martin who had uh, the, you know, he had a hoodie on. And, and you know, most of the, the, the pictures that you saw of him were um, not in the best light. But, you know, based on, you know, we, we who watched the who heard about the case that was the the, the it was the natural event that happened it, it was something that just happened there was no uh, context added to it until the different new, uh, news stations such as MSNBC the major hitters MSNBC CNN Fox News they all um, added uh, you know or emphasized certain elements to 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 bring out a certain viewpoint that they want people wanted people to adopt um, and so that is a um, a I think a good example of how natural frameworks and social frameworks how the dynamic how they work together framing and agenda setting so uh, as we've been talking about framing um, and and I stated earlier that it is tied very closely with agenda setting theory um, but they are actually, even though they're 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 close together, but they're actually uh, different. But um, in the essence of their similarities is that they both focus on how media draws the public's eye to specific topics, um, and in this way they set the the agenda. Okay, um, but where framing is different is that it takes this a step further in the way in which the news is presented and creates a frame for that information. So as I was talking earlier and showing how the the agenda is set forth by who whoever has the story, whoever presents the story, that person has an agenda. Whether it's a positive agenda or a negative agenda, that's uh, neither here nor there. But the, the main point is, is that they have an agenda that they are trying to get across. But in order to get it across, the, they have to take that natural event that occurred and then take parts of it, elements of it, and then create a frame around that, um, those elements and then present it to their audience, to... Um, to in most cases form a uh, particular opinion okay now this is usually a conscious choice which is interesting by journalists because um, we think you know most of us we don't go out looking for news Okay, so most of the news that we get is news that we read in the newspaper or we uh, see on um, KCAL News or, or whichever the media, sta media stations uh, present to us. And so that's how we get our news. And oftentimes that is how our public opinion is shaped by the news that we, um, that we see on a daily basis. But see, the thing we, were, we trust is that these journalists are being honest and forthright in the news that they're pre that they're presenting because oftentimes they could you know we don't know if they have a particular agenda right a particular agenda that is trying to get you to think a certain way that is actually in direct opposition to maybe your own values but yet you might take it um you might take what they say 
you know, at face value and end up not knowing, adopting what it is that they wanted you to, to think. And so that's why I think it's when these ideas are presented, why we have to really be careful in how we intake our news, that we should try to seek to the best of our ability um, what the whole story is, what is the bigger picture, like the uh, the picture that I showed at the beginning of this presentation and that, you know, you can have one one big picture, but if you add frames to emphasize certain elements of that one picture, you may end up uh, believing an entirely different thing that is false to what is what to what the whole story is. But um, that is the difference between framing and agenda and agenda setting. So in conclusion, um, framing, you know, it's a, it's a way of communication. Uh, it's a communication source uh, that defines and con constructs a, a piece of uh, communicated information. Um, framing is very much a, an unavoidable, unavoidable part of human com communication. And this is actually, you know, it's real true because, you know, oftentimes when, you know, you and I, when we tell a story, um, we have, you know, sometimes we have an agenda that we, that we're trying to get across, you know, and, you know, we might try to emphasize, you know, maybe our own, um, accomplishments or, you know, and down, may downplay another person's so that we, that we're trying to make ourselves look in a better light, you know? And so it, it's just a nat. it's, I won't say natural, but, um, we just often communicate in the in this type of way, and so that's why we have to be really careful in in how we present stories because oftentimes if we're, you know, either we're talking about you know what somebody else did and we create a story around that to another person, you know that person, we could either get that person to think negatively or positively about the person that you're talking about, and. Um, you know, so in, in essence, we all, you know, bring, you know, our own frames to our communications. So I want to thank you guys for um, bearing with me as I was going through this. Um, and hopefully that you learned something. Um, right here below, I have um, two um, YouTube videos uh, for you guys to check out. Uh, basically, how framing is presented in the media. Um, the first... Uh, link I have for you is um, about uh, George Bush, and it was uh, going about back to about uh, maybe 2001, 2002. Um, it was a little bit of time after 9/11 had happened, but they were searching for weapons of mass destruction, and um, in order to sell it to the public, they had to make it um, appear as though that um, one of our quote unquote um, major enemies, uh, Saddam, um, that he actually had these weapons of mass destruction, even though they may not have had the, uh, um, the evidence, uh, to, to put that out there, but, you know, that's a, that's another discussion. Uh, but nonetheless, um, the news media had actually gotten a hold of the story and presented the story, um, and framed it in a particular way um, so that everyone would be on board uh, for the invasion of Iraq to go search for these WMDs. Um, the second leak uh, be below that is basically how um, how the police are, are framed in the media and um, as you guys have you know have been paying attention to the news uh, you can see that the the escalation in um, police violence on citizens has um, has has just been um just risen to you know an amount to you know in in such a way where you know we're trying to ask ourselves what is going on you know people who are pro pro blah, supposed to um protect and serve us have actually you know have become violent in 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 a lot of ways but um it's not all but you know we see that some but uh this particular link just shows um just how the police are framed in a different, you know, in three different ways and, um, and how that is used for, um, us to, um, to think about our people in law enforcement. 
so that concludes my presentation, guys. I thank you for listening in and for bearing with me once again. Um, pray that you have a blessed day and uh, grace and peace, you guys. Talk to you later.